Hi all, welcome back to yet another series of Learning Simplified. So in this chapter, we are going to understand how a POS transaction or a point of sale transaction debits your account. back uh, we would have seen a video on how an ATM transaction debits your account in that we went in depth of the ISO 8583 protocol the various messages the various uh, tags with inside the message but in this we are not going to cover in that extent the intent of this video is to highlight how a POS transaction is different from an ATM transaction there are two three critical differences which we will touch upon so before that a quick recap of the components. CBS, of course, is the core banking software like uh, Finical, Teminos, Flexcube, and so on. It houses the customer account balances. Next is the POS, so the point of, sold, uh, point of sale device, which are kept by merchants. The ATM or the POS switching machine, it accepts the request from the point of sale and routes it to the core banking. So essentially, the switch stands in between the CBS and the POS. And finally, uh, something known as the gateway, which is a software belongs to the networks like Visa, Max, MasterCard, um, Rupee, and so on. Quick overview of how the transaction looks like, and this is what I mentioned when I said that the switching software is something which sits in between the ISO 85, the point of sale, and the CBS. So you have the POS machine here. And on the right hand side, we have the core banking database and the switching software sits in the middle. So this is POS to switch, which is proprietary language. And the second layer is where ISO 8583 messages are exchanged. So what are the typical transactions which are supported from a POS? I guess everybody has used a POS and familiar with some of the transactions like purchase. Mercantilize return is when you want to return uh, uh, return something which you have bought. So it's like a refund. Cash advance, there are some countries where you can actually get cash from a merchant like an ATM. Purchase with cashback means part of the amount is used to purchase a good and the remaining comes as a cashback. So for example, your 1000 might be debited from your account, right, of which 900 might go into buying uh, goods and the other 100 will be given to you by the merchant as cash. The transaction flow and see how it's a bit different from ATM. So let's assume a customer of bank A goes to a merchant and the merchant also happens to have a POS machine given by bank A, right? So in this case, bank A is both the issuer because the customer is using its card and bank A is also the acquirer because it is acquiring the transaction because the POS machine is owned by them, right? And the merchant has an account with bank A. So the customer walks in, the merchant swipes his POS machine for let's say 1000 rupees. It goes to bank A's switching software and then it goes to bank A's CBS database. So this is an honors transaction because the issuer and the acquirer both are bank A. So what's the accounting entries? It credits the merchant GL and debits the merchant account. So one key thing to note here is that the merchant is not credited online. It credit a merchant GL or a parking GL or a merchant suspense GL, okay? The reason could be that uh, certain merchants will have multiple outlets and within each outlet they may have multiple POS machines. So if there are multiple concurrent transactions happening, it would create account locks. And also probably I wouldn't want as a merchant to see multiple such small micro transactions on my statement. I might want to see something like a consolidated entry or a clean entry post all refunds or disputes. So this is a simple accounting entry of an honest transaction. So the customer may or may not be debited here. So the additional entry could be you might debit the customer and credit the income GL in case you want to recover some charges from the customer. And we will tell you why 
this customer needs to be charged. Sometimes the merchant may or may not pass the charge to the customer. So the next one is a transaction flow of a remote owners or an office transaction. So in this example, let's say the customer of bank B goes into the merchant whose POS is owned by bank A. So the issuer is bank B and the acquirer is bank A. So now what happens is obviously it goes to bank A switch because the POS is owned by bank A. Now bank A then finds out that okay it belongs to a different bank. It routes it to Visa or Rupee as the case might be depending on the first six digits of the card number. And the Visa will understand that okay it, this belongs to bank B who is a member of the Visa network. And bank B will then update on its database the following accounting entries. It will debit the customer account. Remember the bank B has the customer. So it debits the customer account on bank B and credits the Visa network GL. So for bank B it acts as a remote owners transaction. Now what happens a copy while the message comes here a copy of the message now goes to bank A's database as well. And why is it? Because if you remember the merchant is associated with bank A. So the debit of the Visa network GL happens because this is something it owns from the Visa. Bank B owes to Visa. Bank A owns from Visa. So here again the similar to what we saw in the earlier instant but however instead of debiting the customer account you debit the Visa network GL and you credit the merchant GL here. So now this is a simple flow uh, the two scenarios. The first scenario was an honors. The second scenario is a remote honors and an offers. So in the context of bank A, it's an offers. In the context of bank B, it is a remote honors transaction. So the, now the question naturally arises as now that I have credited to a merchant jail, how is the merchant actually getting the monies? Merchant settlement comes in. The switch creates a file known as the merchant settlement file right and pushes it to the acquiring bank. In this case it is bank A. So the below entries are passed when the MSF file is uploaded. You debit the merchant GL or the merchant parking account and credit the merchant account. And at the same time the MDR or the merchant discount rate or the transaction rate is calculated and charged. So you will debit the merchant account and credit the income GL. So this is why some merchants insist that if you are using a card I may not give you the required discount or I might need to charge you extra. That's because he in turn is charged by the bank. Of course there are cases where the government recently to promote digital transactions have made a waiver for certain cases where the amount is less than 2000 for example a waiver of MTR charges. Uh, so however this is the generic process. Bit different here uh, in a POS transaction is pre-authorization. So a pre-auth transaction works like this. Suppose you check into a hotel for a three-day stay. It amounts to 9,000 rupees. So at the reception you swipe uh, for a transaction known for three sorry it should be 9,000. So the, at the reception they will swipe you for 9,000. So a 0100 message is sent to the core banking and it places a hold of 9000. So remember 9000 is not debited from the account. It just places a hold or a lien. By the way this is only for debit cards not for credit cards. So what happens next? The hold is usually placed for a maximum of 15 to 30 days. What is when you check out? So after you stay for an additional day, a fourth day, the final charges comes to say 13,000 because of the additional day as well as for let's say laundry and other charges. So at the time of checkout, the receptionist again swipes but this time it puts in the code for auth completion. This time a 0220 message goes to the CBS and this time the CBS removes the hold of 9,000 and debits the account for 13,000. So this completes the auth completion. So this is a dual message. The first message is for the block. The second message is for removing the block and posting the accounting entries. For this uh, <coughs> and uh, there are many more videos to come up. 
especially understanding the off-balance sheet items. Hope you like this video. Thank you.